crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. Happy New Year 2023. We're going to create a New Year's card that says Welcome 2023 using the paper that we're going to be saying goodbye to. But this stamp set is going to be around for a while. So you can make these to your heart's content all year long. And I'm also going to show you at the end of this video all the projects we created in this series. There's about 20 projects. You're going to get to see how you can use these numbers in other ways to help personalized birthday cards, etc. All right, it's an easy card. And it just I hope you can craft along with me with your your dies. And I want to mention a couple things. So this paper here, this is called Celebrate Everything. You've seen me use it a lot. I actually have the whole another whole pack. I made sure I got some more because I'm putting it in my kits, at least at the beginning of this year. My next kit's going to be on Seaside Bay. I'll probably mention that later. So we have this paper. Let me, let me just talk about this for a second. So this mini catalog's retiring soon. So it's called the July to December mini catalog, but it doesn't retire until the new one starts. So if you, so this is, you know, by January 4th, this one will be retired. And I'm going to show you. So if you spend $150 at my Stampin' Up! store, then this is one of the rewards that you can cash in for. So this is called Host Rewards. The only way to get this paper or these caroling mice, this one is a $13 Rewards. So you get 10% rewards when you spend $150. That's on any kind of order. It doesn't have to be a workshop order. Any order of $150 is a workshop order. You get this paper. I am madly in love with this paper because it's so versatile. We're going to be able to see the fireworks are great for New Year's. We have Christmas paper. I've been using the heck out of it. I used it all through the series and I've been using it for months now. There's, there's fun summer patterns and they're just great. And plus, I also love bright colors. So this catalog's retiring. Less chance to get that. This one's going to keep on going. Oh, by the way, so this, this warm welcome bundle that we've been playing with, it's available now at my Stampin' Up! store, this, this whole bundle. But it's actually in this catalog. But I'm not allowed to open this catalog yet until January 5th. So I have a lot of fun stuff in store showing you this catalog. So just you can get this now. I just want to mention, if you want this catalog and the celebration brochure and you're in the U.S., I will send you both of these. So please use the form in the description of this video below. Right down there, open up the little arrow and use the form and request the celebration and mini catalog. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to show you the paper and then we're going to take the piece out that we need because I have a whole new pack because I only, I already used up everything from the little kit. So in your kit, and you don't have to get the kit to follow along. <laughs> Look at this stuff sticking all over the place. You don't have to get the kit to follow along with me. You can always follow along these, 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 Video tutorials are all freely available on YouTube when I do these workshop series. Because I know that people are watching me from other countries. But if you were in the US and you were one of my customers and you purchased a kit, then you had some kind of paper pouch like this. So I gave you 12 pieces of Celebrate Everything Designer Series paper. Okay, it's just super cute. We used it so much. So, I'd, and there's two kinds of pieces you can use for fireworks. But I didn't have any more in here, so I'm just gonna show you the pack now. Celebrate Everything Package. Let me put this little star there in case I need it later. Let me do some die cutting too. So let's open this up. All right, it's completely sealed. I'm going to open up this package because I need it anyway to make for my next kit. I just like to give people extras in my kits, like extra paper so we could do a lot more projects instead of just like the exact project. Plus, I never know exactly what I'm doing until I do it because I have to get the inspiration. All right, so here we go. So this is the one. You get four, You get 48 sheets in a pack. It's $18, so it's a really good value for 48 sheets of double-sided paper. Okay, so this is one piece with the polished pink on the back. You got your pool party. Okay, so you can use this for your fireworks cards, this piece here. And if this is all you have left from the kit I sent you, just go ahead and, you know, then you can sponge color like we've been doing with the blending brush. So you can sponge color it, whatever color you want, maybe multicolors. But I'm going to use the, the fun piece. Okay, we have more Christmas paper and then the granny apple green on the back of that. More Christmas baubles and Poppy Prayed on the back of that. Really fun. Some stars. So we have Halloween. This one's good for Halloween. Or this one's good. Use this one for New Year's card as well. I see you guys are all talking about the weather and things. Cool. In different places. Okay, this is pretty neat too. I think this is going to be fun for the owls to do something with the owls. Maybe color it in crumb cakes. We have Halloween. We've made some fun Halloween projects. In my fall, in my Brother Scan and Cut fall projects course, my coupons are still available. 
Get my newsletter if you want the coupons. All right, for my Scan and Cut courses or join my Paper Chef, Paper Chef Scan and Cut user group. Look at this, we got fall paper. See what I mean, how great this is? Ha, and here's the one I want. All right, so this is the one I want. Take a piece of this out. Let me show you the back of it. Fantastic. And then we got stripes and shaded spruce. And then this piece with polka dots. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. All right, so that's what you're that's what you can only get until January 4th. I just I just stocked up on it. I, so I'm good. I have enough for my next kit, but maybe not after that. I am sharing what I have and then I still have some for next year for myself. All right, so that's this is what I'm doing. Taking a piece of this and we're going to first make the card the top of the card. The stripes are your favorite too. Yeah, Gloria, they're my favorite too because you can use them for absolutely anything. So you're going to go ahead and cut this. First, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the, the six by six only because I need it for my kit. And I'm going to make sure I, I have an even six by six here. All right, so now I can put a few of these away in my kit. So let's see which one I use for this card. Let's see. Probably that one. All right, now what I want you to do is cut the top of the card. So I want you to cut, I want you to do uh, five and a quarter, right? So this is a regular card, a card front, five and a quarter. So cut three quarters of an inch off the one side, and then you're going to do it by four inches. Okay. We'll go, we'll go ahead and write that down for you. I have a, I have the grid paper here. So let me move some of these things. And these are the dies we're going to be using. So we're going to be using these three dies and these two colors of ink. Cool part. Well, actually in black too, memento black as well. Let's move this here. And so Wink Costello is always fun for New Year's too. All right, so we have DSP. We're going to have the DSP is going to be five and a quarter times four inches. So now what you're going to do is open up your stamp and cut and emboss machine. All right. And see how it goes like this. This is a great thing to get as part of your starter kit, by the way. The stamp and cut and emboss machine. We have such a great special coming up. Okay, so we have this is platform one. You need that your base plate. You need plate number two, which is your thin die adapter. Then you need one of these plate number threes, which is your sort of your scratch one. And then the one that's a little bit nicer, I use for the top. So you're gonna be using your die cutting sandwiches, plate one. Whenever you do thin dies, plate two. And then you need two plate number threes. That's your die cutting sandwich. We call it a sandwich. And so I put that on top. So you're gonna put our paper here, like so. So what we wanna do is take a piece of, you're gonna go ahead and stamp your, your door. Wait, I already stamped the door. Let me see which one looks better. This one's a little bit fuzzy. We'll use this one. So go ahead and stick your door there. I did, I'm just doing this a little differently than I did before. And I had a piece of vellum as well. So get your piece of vellum. I gave you vellum in the kit. And the vellum was from the layering vellum pieces. Or I guess it was called botanical layers vellum or something like that. That was in with your dandy garden here. Or dandy, I don't know. Dandy, let me figure it out. I forget the name of that one is. I'm, I'm, my brain's mush. I was kind of under the weather. All right, so I think I've been working too hard on the, on the shed. So I just put that there for a minute. We just need, put this there. So bottom line is we just, actually we could, we could cut this one separate. We don't want to cut too much at once. Just go ahead and cut yourself a little door. Okay, basically cut yourself a little door in your in your piece that's five and a quarter by four. Okay, so that's what we're doing right now. Finding the top plate. Where did my top plate go? I just had it a second ago. Here we go. And then what we're then what we'll do is we'll do the other part separate, only because we don't want to try to shove a piece of vellum, DSP, and all that through at the same time. And plus we need to cut a hole in the door anyhow. So that way we'll have like the other two dies. So now we have this piece. And then I want you to put this on a piece of granny apple green. I've already created the card for the granny apple green. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and attach that like so. And make sure your fireworks are right side up. Right, like see how the fireworks go a certain direction. Let's find some. I'm just using seal plus. Seal Plus Adhesive here. I love the Seal Plus Adhesive.
Okay, so we're gonna put that on a piece of, we're gonna make sure this opens up, see? Granny apple green, and it opens up, and we're gonna push this, put this like so. Whoops. Oops, let's make sure we get it centered. Quarter inches usually for giving home. Let me put this down. Sometimes I just need to, because I'm looking through the camera, right? So I need to be further away for things to stay in. It's like I'm working through, instead of looking straight at something, I'm looking through the camera, so it's a weird angle. All right, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Centered it pretty good. All right, so there we go. So we have the space for the door. All right, so now let's do this. So when this is going to be our little vellum, that's going to be so you can see through to the piece like this. You're going to put like this. You're going to have like a little piece of vellum. Isn't that cool? So it's kind of like your, your screen of your door. So you're like, you're looking out into the fireworks and this is going to, the pattern matches up quick, like nicely. I just thought it would be neat to look, look through your door to the outside. Like you're looking through the glass of your door or looking through like the screen. So it's a little foggy or something out there. So you're still seeing the whole fireworks sky. Okay, so you're just going to go ahead and attach that. And, and you could do like this because vellum, you don't want to see through the vellum. So just kind of put a little bit, you know, put a little bit of adhesive back there and, you know, line up your vellum like so. And I use those little stars. So you see how that, you're not going to be able to see this piece of vellum because your door is over the top of it. And I, I use these little stars to like help, you know, hold the door on there. Like later. Okay. And also let's put some adhesive back there to hold the door in place. So you're going to stick your little door. Like so, it fits perfectly like a little piece of the puzzle. And you got your vellum. All right, so now we can cut the door itself and we could do some. I forgot to do the inking up anyway, so I'm glad I didn't actually die cut that because it's easier to ink up. So that's the DSP. So let's do the cardstock for you with the notes. So that's going to be 11 inches times. And see, we're going to just do this like four and a quarter. All right, like that, like so. See, that makes sense. I'm opening it up like that so you can get the visual. You all know how to do this from all my workshops, hopefully. I keep repeating this part. Score at, this is an A2 card. Score at five and a half. Okay, so that's what the card stock looks like. Granny apple green, DS, and then the DSP. So let's go ahead and die cut the other part. Ooh, little little fun letters. All right, so now we're going to get, we have this part, and we need, we need to get an ink. We're going to ink this up a little bit so with some pool party. And then we'll die cut it. It's always easier to ink it before you die cut it. Okay, let's open up the pool party. Let's take our little brush, our blending brush. And instead of dipping it straight into the pool party, I like to dip it into a stamping block. This is how I like to use. Boy, that's not, that needs, I need a re-inker on that guy, don't I? That's not very much ink at all. All right, so there we go. So we're going to just kind of put some on the stamping brush. There we go. And we're just going to kind of ink around. Yeah, this one doesn't have a whole lot of ink on it. <laughs> Maybe that's why I was using the smaller, the smaller, uh, I had a, a smaller thing earlier, like the edge of it, edge of something. There we go. I think I got a little bit of more ink on there. Tap, tap. We've been, we've been doing this the whole time. We've been coloring in our doors. I got lots of little letters sticking all over. We're going to make letter stickers as well. Tap, tap, tap. We're cutting out the middle of the door, so it really doesn't matter. And we're going to just color in some of the door. So that's, we kind of inked it around a little bit. Let me push this up so you can see it. And now we're going to just color in. Just grab a, a dark pool party blend. Color in the doorknob. Color in this line. Right, like so. I mean, whatever you want to color in. The frame, just color, color to your heart's content. Maybe this frame over here. I didn't do it on mine. See? Oh, yes, I did. I did the one frame. So I did this line and that line. So just we'll just do that again. Just do this. You could use light pool party, dark pool party. It doesn't really matter. And it, if you already cut the hole in the door, then it doesn't matter. You know, just color it afterwards. Because I had a whole bunch of these cut out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the top of the door a little bit darker than the bottom of the door. All right, goody, goody, goody. Now let's get this. Close this. So we're going to put that sandwich back, right? Same sandwich as before. 
putting this here, but this time we want to use the wall safe tape. I think it's linked in the description of this video. My tape that helps keep the paper from ripping. Let's find it. I'm just going to start throwing stuff on the floor that I'm not using. Okay, we need this piece here. All right. I'm taking everything I'm not using and throwing it on my floor because I just never seem to find anything. But I have high hopes for being able to find things when, with my new she shed. That is, that is the plan. So where is the wall safe tape? All right, here we go. The plan is to have like an island or a table where I work and then little drawers and buckets all around me. And I have buckets all around me right now, but they just keep popping. They don't hold a lot and things keep popping out of the buckets and they never get their way back into the bucket. So what I'm doing now is I'm using this tape to hold the door so that it doesn't slip, so the die doesn't slip. So something like that. Now this die has had major use. I probably used it like 50 times, so it's like major warped. But there you go. So something like that. Now I'm going to put, I should have put this underneath it. I'm going to put the door on it now. I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole through the door at the same time. What's nice about this little door die, what I love about it, besides it cuts a hole perfect and that you can use the rectangle for other things. What I love about this door is that the metal part of the door touches the other piece of the metal, like perfectly. So it's like easy to line up that door. And you could do so many things with this. And if you know any realtors, I could think a great gift to them, to a realtor would be like welcome to your new home or open house cards. So you could give them a present that they can give to the customers that buy houses from them or that need to, you know, they're going to an open house. So you can just, you can give them a set of cards because this to me like would be really cool. I mean, anybody, an architect, realtor, anybody that has open houses, like even Stampin' Up! Demonstrators, we have open houses, like catalog open house, open house, open heart, open mind. This, there's just such cool sentiments on here. This is good for any of your neighbors or just friends. My door is always open for you. Okay, it's just really cool. And let's just now put the top plate on there and crank this through. And the reason you want to use tape is because you don't want the metal parts like overlapping and touching and stuff like that. Because then you can warp your metal. So there you go. Hopefully. The tape doesn't rip the paper. But if it does, that's what you use embellishments to cover it up for. So far, so good. Save these little rectangles because you can put things on them. I've been using them for sentiments. Put that die over there. And save the little extra sheets on the outside too, because you might, yeah, you, know, you might still be able to cut out, die cut some pieces out of the back of that, like right there. All right, so the door is perfect. And now let's go ahead and, now I'm gonna use glue for that part. Well, not, not for the whole thing. I'm not gonna use glue. I'm only using glue here because it's hard to get this. This is like a quarter inch or whatever. So I'm gonna use, I'm actually using my, tape on the other part see so now i'm just using the glue for this part because it's so small of an area so you just you know don't use too much glue because everyone tells me to use too much glue you don't want it to ooze out right that's what i'm doing a little bit of glue that is our multi-purpose adhesive i'm putting that in here like so so now you can see through the door to the fireworks on the outside see through your little Screen door, glass door, whatever you want to call it. I just thought that would look cool with some vellum. Plus, just another extra layer. You know, anytime you have an extra layer on a card, I think extra layers look cool. Okay, so that's good. Now, it's still going to kind of be flopping up a little bit because the vellum behind it, there's not really adhesive behind this piece of vellum because you don't want the adhesive to show through. So what happened is when I put the 2023 on there, it kind of held it down. But then also I put a little star there to hold it down. So that might be what you might want to do right away. You could put a little star there. These are called adhesive back stars. I don't know if these are retiring, but I, I do need to go through the retiring list to tell you a few of my favorite things that are retiring. But the, you know, so put a couple stars to help hold the door down on that side if you want. And we'll, we'll add some more stars later. 
but they're in the holiday catalog. I just love those. Now let's make the number 2023. So we're going to use the adhesive sheets. So we're going to go ahead and get some foil out. I gave you foil in your kits because that's how I roll. I like to give you guys lots of cool stuff in your kits. And you had lots of extra foil. I mean, you can make like literally hundreds and hundreds of numbers with the pieces of foil I gave you. So go ahead and take these pieces. They're red and green foil. And you're going to use your adhesive sheets. These are, this is like, in other words, you're going to make your own sticker. So that's what you're doing, making your own sticker. So this is an adhesive sheet. And let's just do this. Let's just, well, we don't need a big piece. Here, let's just do a little piece. So here, maybe yay big. Okay, so we're going to take, you're going to get a piece of the sticker. The adhesive sheets come in a pack of 10. They are 12 inches by 6 inches. And what you're going to do is use these when you're die cutting to turn any of your die cuts into stickers. So you're going to put the, they're double sided. So one side sticks to the back of the cardstock like so. And the other side we peel off later. So you can see I just even saved it in case I need to make a couple little numbers in there. So we're going to take this little piece of red foil and we're going to just stick, a, stick it in there. And we need the die that has numbers on it that I told you we're using. There's the die with numbers on it. It's a fantastic little die. That's what we're making the 2023 out of. We're putting that on there, and we're going to make some stickers. And let's move it over so that you can make two sets of stickers, right? Because you need two. For the 2023, you need to run it through twice. You need two twice. Right? You're going to need 2023. Okay, now I want you to take your take your pick tool. That's the really cool, what I call it the pokey tool. I'm just leaving those measurements there in case you need it. And you're gonna take your take your pick tool and you're gonna poke out the little bits, right? The little numbers. And then you're gonna take all the extra ones and put them in your bucket of crafty goodness. So I've already done a bunch of eights for my niece's birthday card, but I might save that eight right there. So the I need a two, a four, and I just have like a little bucket of numbers. Like little lots of numbers over here, just putting them all. Maybe I'm gonna put them in a bag because all I keep doing is spilling the, the numbers. I've spilled them like 20 times. I'm like, why don't I just put them in a bag? All right, so I'm gonna take a two that I cut out earlier. Here's a two. And we'll do we'll do the 20, 23. And I'll do green. I'm just alternating the red and green. Okay. So you poke those out with the pokey tool and poke the rest out later. I like to save time whenever I can on my YouTube videos so that I'm not wasting any time. So we're just going to take these off. I have to put on my glasses. These are very small numbers. So you, I, 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 I just find it's easier to peel them off with my hand than the take your pick tool. But the take your pick tool has putty on it. And one good thing about it is you can pick up the numbers with it. So I do like to use it. To, well, I'm not even going to use it right now for that. But I'm just going to say you could pick up the numbers with it. My putty's gone. My putty's gone. See, my putty, they're supposed to, you can get a putty refill. So I need to get a putty refill. But there's putty here and you can pick up things with your putty. Well, not right now because my putty's gone. So 20, 23. Dun, dun, dun. Happy New Year, everybody. It just makes me excited. So my nephews and everybody, were like, they were all watching the football games last night. And so we missed the darn ball dropping. Did you guys get to see the ball drop? We couldn't even find the channel by the time. But I mean, we were glad we were watching Georgia because Georgia won. So that was pretty cool that Georgia won. But we couldn't get the channel fast enough after we stopped the game. So we missed the ball drop. And then you wouldn't believe how hard it was to try to find a video of it today without watching a whole bunch of extra stuff. So that was really, but it was cool. I got to see it. I got to see it on YouTube later. Okay, so those, that's going to stick really good to the vellum, the 2023, and now we just need the welcome. Now for the welcome, I did try to use the dies that came in your in your kit. I tried to use this one. See, I just think it doesn't look right. So if that's, but if that's all you have, this is a die that came in your kit. You know, you can go ahead and use it. It's just, it's a little short for me, a little short. So what I used is what I gave you all as part of your kit. I gave you all this. I didn't give you the die itself, but I gave you pieces in your kits because I always extra do extra stuff. I gave you this one called welcome. And it was made with the, the stylish shapes dies. Okay, so I'm just going to put a couple dimensionals behind there. So it's, I used the stylish shapes dies to get that really good, like, long piece for the welcome. But if all you have is this, 
I'm always saying use whatever you have, right? I'm gonna use whatever you have. So I'm gonna go like this, put that in the door, a little bit in the door and a little bit over here, like so. And then I put a bunch of bling on this card. So we're gonna take all the bling. We're gonna do, I did seven pieces of bling. So we're gonna put that there so you can see it. We will grab out the bling. We have, these are called rhinestones. And I thought these would look really cool, like in the middle of the different pieces of fireworks, right? Like coming out of the fireworks. I did one there, one there, and one over there. So I did three, three rhinestones. They're called rhinestone basic jewels. And then I did four stars because I like to use odd numbers. These are called adhesive back stars. And, you know, you can never have enough embellishments, in my opinion. So let's put a star there. And we do one, two, three, and we'll put another star over there somewhere. And that is how it's done. That is how we do this card from start to finish. And you know, you know how to make the base of the card. And you missed, okay, she fell asleep and missed the ball drop. The sad part is, Pamela, I stayed awake to watch the ball drop and couldn't watch it because we couldn't find the channel. But we did have... We did have a lot of fun eating, eating, drinking, and being merry last night. But that's not why I slept all day. It was just more just like, I think, burning candle at both ends and having a New Year good old sleep. It was our day of rest from the big project. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Lisa from Ontario and Yvonne and Deborah from New South, South Wales, Australia and Gloria. And yeah, Deborah, the she shed's coming along great. They're working really hard. And Linda from Stamp, Cut, and Create. Yep, it's coming along good. Pamela from Colorado. Gloria is saying she's from Michigan and it's where it's raining. Yeah, I see everybody talking about the weather. Hello, Star. Rosemary. All right, I'm just, oh, wow. Cool. Yellowstone. I love, I, Yvonne, I love Yellowstone. Such a cool place. I bet it's beautiful this time of year. Hello, Luis from Ontario, Canada, and Beth. All right, so what I want to do now is just, you know, as I'm saying hi to you, is grab my basket of Crafty goodness. This is an actual basket of it, not a bucket of it. I mean, this is an actual basket. I'm showing you all the things we created in the series because this is the conclusion of our series. I just want to show you all the things we created in the Warm Welcome series. That way you can, you know, if you like any of these things. Oh, yeah, Lisa, too. I, I also love the stylish shapes, guys. So if you like these now, you, you do have one stitch die that came in your kit, the welcome kit. But then the, the best thing about the stylish shapes is it stitches twice. They, the stylish shapes dies stitch. It's just one thing that I think everyone should get as part of their starter kit if they don't have it. It stitches the inside and then it stitches the other side as well. So it stitches into your paper. And hello, Linda from Florida. All right, so today in part five, we did this one. That welcome 2023. And inside, you put a piece of basic white that would be five and a quarter by four inches and you write Happy New Year on there. I'm going to also use these for maybe my thank you cards, maybe for the Christmas presents, right? You could, you could use these as a thank you card for someone. Or maybe someone sent you a Christmas card and you don't want to send them a Christmas card late. So instead of sending them a Christmas card back, you can send them a welcome 2023 card back to them, right? So that's what I used that for. And then last time we were here, we created these shaker cards. So this was really fun. And I'm just going to kind of go over the, the things we used because it's part of your kit. So we had, for these, we used the Tea Boutique Designer Series paper. And th that's what these flowers are, the Tea Boutique. And that's when I really liked how the door made the indentation into the paper. And that's why I'm just from now on, I think I'm going to cut the doors like that, like we did tonight. Except we did one more layer there. We had to put, this is raised up because we did the shaker card, right? So that's how we did that. And then this one is the Tea Boutique Designer Series paper. And you guys voted on the little kitty. You wanted the kitty for the shaker card for that one. So we made that one together. And then this is the Tea Boutique Designer Series paper for the shaker card. And it's the flowers. So this is another sample. So we did shaker cards. And this is the stylish shape size. Whereas this is just your plain door, your plain door, right? Just going right like that. Yeah, thanks. I think the fireworks paper was perfect for that too. So that's the tea boutique paper. And then we have this one, which is, I'm pretty cold. It's called Dandy Designs. So I, in another video, I showed you how to make these boxes and a bunch of 3D items. So these, these are, again, you know, just, you could use it for birthdays. I think fireworks are great for birthdays as well. Not just, you know, not just a New Year's. So I showed you how to make these things called the box in a bag. And I have another video on YouTube. So you could watch part three, I believe it is, where we created the box in the bag. Right. But you could also just watch the video on YouTube and just search for a box in a bag. And I show you how to make it in a separate video. So I made box in a bag twice. I also made it in some of my scan and cut courses and things. I showed you box in a bag. 
when we did the parts. I think we cut out the parts. But this one I did manually with the Simply Scored. So that's this is Celebrate Everything paper, this one here. Glittered organdy ribbon and pool party sheer ribbon and then fresh freezer ribbon for these two. And the dandy designs and this one is the Celebrate Everything. Okay, so we did this boxes and then we did these. Also in part three, we did some 3D items. I showed you how to make these matchbook treat holders. And the matchbook treat holders will hold a Ghirardelli chocolate or they will hold a tea bag. Hi, Betty, glad to see you. So Betty, you just got here. What we just made in part five, Betty, are these New Year's cards. That's what we just made. Okay, so Paula, thank you for saying to remember the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber here, please subscribe for more crafty goodness. All right, so that was part three. Then part two, oh, we did the birthday cards. So then in the birthday cards, I was telling you I added a bunch of extra eights for my niece's birthday card. And that's why I saved the extra eight right here. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can go ahead and put the extra eight on here. I will go ahead and put it down here on the bottom. So that's why I was saying every time I cut out the numbers, I would have extra numbers. I'm just going to go ahead and put it right down here. See? So now she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I need one more. Well, I would normally do an odd number, but I think I might put eight number eights, or I just might keep it at an odd number seven because it's the number eight, right? What do you think? Should I put eight eights or seven eights? Just write seven or eight, whatever you think I should do to finish this card off. I just got to run the numbers through one more time. And this is my mom's 91st. So she's coming up to 91st. So my niece is coming up to eight, then 91st for my mom. And then my sister's coming up on her 68th birthday. So what I love about these little number dies is that we can personalize cards with this set. It's just perfectly, perfect size numbers for personalizing any card. Okay, so eight. Okay, I need eight. I need another eight then. Got, got it, guys. I got it. I'm going to run it through right after this and make another number eight. All right, cool. And then the other cards we made, so that was part two when we did birthday cards. Part one, we did, this is the Tea Boutique Designer Series paper, these two, and then this one's the Dandy Designs again. So I did these cards, let's spend, let's spend time together, and we used our linen thread. So you got to use all the ribbons that I sent you. You got to use your linen thread and some of the ribbons, not all the ribbons, because we didn't use the gingham ribbon, but I sent you some gingham ribbon as well. But feel free to use it for any way you see fit, any of the ribbons, any of the things. You can make lots of extra stuff. So these, these I just made these cards with Tea Boutique, Tea Boutique, and Dandy Designs. So those were some other cards. And then on World Car Making Day in October, I created some of these cards here which we, I didn't make in our series, but it was the inspiration for this whole series, is when Stampin' Up! made these for us live, they made these two note cards for us live. And it was kind of like the inspiration for, I'm going to do a series on this whole set. Because I bought this, we did it. We did something for World Car Making Day where they did they demonstrated three stamp sets. Well, I didn't like the other two because they were all floral. I didn't buy them, and I didn't. I, but I participated during World Car Making Day by making these two note cards with them. And then I added, I just jazzed it up by taking this one and using an embossing folder and jazzing it up. So after that, I said, oh, I already have this. So once I invest in a bundle and I like the bundle, I tried to do a whole series on it for my crafty friends so that you can get the money, you know, really get your money's worth out of your bundles and really make a lot of projects with the same bundle. I like to just dig in. Plus, it's a way for me to spark my own creativity by trying to be challenged enough to, to do things with you for your, for your crafty enjoyment. All right. So that's all I got for you today. And I hope you enjoyed the series. Let me just give a little plug for my new series. And happy birthday, Luis, coming up. And Betty. All right, cool. So we have what's called the Seaside Bay. So I'm going to be sending out the kits this week. You have it until January 7th. And I'm already starting. I have some kit, enough to make four kits. I don't have enough to make all your kits. I can't order any more paper. Into, they won't let us order any more paper until January 5th. That's like Stampin' Up! Demonstrators. I've been cut off. I've reached my limit. So there is going to be a kit for this, and I'll send the rest of the kits later in the month. But for those of you that ordered a kit early, especially my team members, you get, you're get you going to get this, and I'm going to start working on this project in the next few days. We're going to be doing Seaside Bay, and there's an entire suite of products around this. You're going to get some balmy blue ribbon, some flat adhesive back pearls. You're going to get some die-cut shapes, and you're going to get the designer series paper and a bunch of other stuff. I'm giving you some of this paper here celebrate everything and you're going to be able to do a lot of extra things with this as we as I show you alternative projects. So that's what the next month series is on. And then after that, the one the month after that is going to be on Easter bunny. So, so we can find. And so that will be the February series. 
We're going to work on this for an entire month and make all our stuff an Easter basket. That'll be a lot more 3D when we do the Easter Bunny projects. I also think that because there's an Easter Bunny punch for this one and not for the other items, that we'll have fun cutting some of these out with the scan and cut as well. So I'll probably be doing some tutorials prior to that on cutting out these stamped images with your scan and cut. Especially, I'm curious to see if there's going to be a gap here. If this little egg will cut separate, I'm trying to kind of trying to guess to see what's going to happen. All right, so that's all for now. Those are what's going on. If you want a catalog, go in the link in the description. If you want a sign up for these series, or if you want to sign up for my current coming up designer series paper share, please let me know. I will write back to you if you sign up for a catalog. Tell you about my designer series paper share as well. Okay, so deadline for all those things are going to be, I think, January seventh or eighth. All right. Thank you, thank you, Pam, Deborah, Linda, Betty. All right. Have a great day. Happy New Year, everybody. See you again real soon.